Now, this is really cool, uh, just for the type of studying going on here. So there was a new study in Canada from the University of Montreal, and they were trying to figure out how memory is affected by video games. You know, there, there's a lot of studies out there showing the impacts of video games in the brain. Some that say they make you more violent, they make you less violent. This isn't about violence. This is just about pure memory and, and what video games can do to help or hurt your memory. Now, in order to do this study, uh, they took 51 men and 46 women. So I said about 100 people and had them play uh, 90 hours of screen time with Call of Duty, Killzone, and Borderlands 2, 90 hours total between all those games, and then 90 hours of various 3D Mario games. Now, before they did this, they wanted to establish how their memories worked. So it, to do this, you had to figure how they learned. How did they put things in their memory to figure out? So before they did this, they were trying to figure out who you know, who were spatial learners and who were response learners. And spatial learners essentially look at what's around them and memorize specific landmarks, whereas <laughs> response learners uh, would do things like just memorize what path they went down by memorizing the amount of turns because they had to solve a maze on a computer before they could play the games to determine which type of learner they are. Now, this is important because this now delves deep into what these games had an effect on the different types of learners. So once their learning strategy was established, participants then began playing the action in 3D platform video games. The same amount of screen time on each produced very different effects on the brain. 90 hours of playing action games led to a hippocampal atrophy in response learners, which isn't good. Uh, while 90 hours of playing 3D games, and remember, these are the Mario games, led to increased gray matter within the hippocampal memory system of all participants. So what's cool is that Mario, even though it's not, uh, you know, th this is one study, it, it doesn't matter what type of learner you are, Mario literally increased gray matter, and gray matter is huge for memory. So it's it's hugely important for us to maintain gray matter. Uh, so the idea that, in the, at least in this one study, which needs to be replicated and replicated again and again and again, over and over and over again, to prove these are not just one-off results with these 96 or so people, uh, it's very interesting hearing that Mario, of all things, no matter how you learn, is good for your brain. Everyone go out and buy Super Mario Odyssey and play it until you die. <laughs> that, that's almost what I get out of this. But... Let's, let's just continue with the study. So it says, because spatial strategies were shown to be associated with increase in hippocampal gray matter during video game playing, it remains possible that response learners could be encouraged to use spatial strategies to counteract against negative effects on the hippocampal system. And I'm going to put a link down to this in the description of the study because it gives you uh, a suggestion to uh, you know FPS makers and action game makers how they could design their games slightly differently to encourage the other type of memory uh, use because, like everything, the brain can be trained, right? Brain training, haha, <laughs> through DS or whatever. But you can actually train your brain to learn things in a specific way, even if that's not your usual way of handling it. So it, it could encourage that type type of learning in those action games. Now let's set all of that aside for now, and just consider what this study is showing out of Canada. It is showing that for people who learn things and remember things in a certain way, FPS games are bad for them. Uh, not bad for them in that it changes their behaviors, but it decreases their gray matter, which affects their memory, specifically the short-term memory. Whereas for, you know, Mario players, we have apparently a better short-term memory because we play Mario games, because of how Mario games make us think and how it works our brain, how it exercises it. And maybe this explains why some Nintendo fans have a good memory. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, maybe a lot of sports athletes should look into playing Mario games when they retire, especially if they have like CTE issues. Play Mario games. It increases your gray matter, which is healthy for you. You want a high level of gray matter. This is You're not going to forget where your keys are. You're not going to forget to pick up your kids. You're not going to forget uh, to do a lot of things every single day that sometimes people forget. It could actually help put, up, put off, potentially, if this study can be recreated, this could help stave off Alzheimer's and other things like we're looking at how Mario and games like it, it could positively impact people's brains to a point where 
everyone's going to want to play it because it's going to give you a healthier, longer life for your brain. That is awesome. And again, this is just one study. And this isn't me trying to trash on FPS games. I, mean, I play Splatoon. Come on, it's an FPS game, basically. I mean, I know it's a third person, but it's an action game, right? And a game like Splatoon would obviously probably fall on the action side of the scale. So, you know, there's... There's pros and cons to this, but it's crazy that every single person, no matter the memory style, Mario helped them. Uh, what this means right now is little, um, outside of the fact that apparently, uh, if this can be replicated and keeps having this 100% rate with Mario, Mario helps you with your memory. This is just insane. And I'm trying not to overblow it, but this is one of the first studies I've seen of video games that wasn't done with an agenda. Uh, a lot of studies I read about video games are targeting them to find out something, to find something that supports whatever that they are seeking. And a lot of times it's, you know, it's like the media wants to say that video games increase violence in teenagers. So their studies are focused around trying to find ways that, you know, trying to find connections that make that possible. And then you have people who want to prove that video games don't have an impact on behavior of teenagers. And so then they, <laughs> they, they, they work and focus on studies that might help prove that and, and cherry pick statistics out that help that case. What I like about this study is it's not about any of that. It's setting aside all the mumbo jumbo of, you know, biases towards wanting to paint video games in a certain light. Instead, they're just examining how video games affect gray matter in our memory. And this is just so cool to have this kind of unbiased thing out there. And again, I'm not saying FPS games are terrible for your brain. Stop playing them. And if anything, th this just shows that you should probably have a balance in your gaming diet, right? You play a lot of FPS games, be sure you're playing some platformers as well, man. Play some, some strategy games. Mix it up. Uh, don't just be someone who plays a certain style of, of game all the time. Uh, to me, I think that's the best way you can have a healthy brain. If you like to use video games to keep exercising your brain and potentially get more gray matter. And again, I'm not a scientist. So like, this isn't like advice that, oh my gosh, it's scientifically proven. I mean, there's one study that shows Mario games are awesome for your brain, but, uh, it's just one study. And as always too much of anything can be bad for you. I don't know if there's such thing as too much gray matter, but too much video games can cause other issues, you know, eye issues and who knows, radiation from your TV you give you cancer? Be, I, I beats me. There's radiation everywhere. So uh, it's just a very interesting study, and I'm hoping that more universities worldwide start doing a similar study to this to further see how different types and different genres of video games and different video game franchises can affect you. Because right now, Mario, 100% positive, Killzone, Call of Duty, and, you know, <laughs> Borderlands 2, for like half of people in the world, bad. Um, it, it's just a very interesting study, and I wanted to bring this up because I just think this is such a cool thing that's being researched. For like the first time, something scientific and really cool is being looked into how video games affect people. Anyways, I'm Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Otherwise, folks, I will just catch you in the next one.